Hi, in this topic or video, I will talk about data migration, opening balances, recommendations, and best practices. This is for Oracle Cloud. Data migration or opening balances, if you are going to make a migration from any legacy systems, either Oracle ERB, eBusiness, uh, Microsoft, any legacy systems to the cloud. I will give you as a guidance on the approach to convert master and transactional data for business objects in Oracle cloud applications. Across business functions, for example, in financials, some modules in procurement, and related HCM as employees location like this. I will provide as an overview of the methods and the techniques to convert the intended business objects across the various cloud ERP products. The business objects and the conversion tools included in these videos are intended to be generic and don't relate to a specific organization. Furthermore, if an organization has implemented multiple ledgers or multiple business units for a ledger, the approach needs to accommodate each ledger or business unit individually and shared business objects where applicable. If you are not implementing all business functions covered in this video, you can use only the relevant sections that pertain to your Oracle Cloud implementation. Let's start by the conversion strategy of the migration. Create a conversion strategy during the early stages of the implementations. This will enable you to obtain stakeholders buy-in and plan of the scheduled tasks, efforts, and resources needed. You also should include the following in your conversion strategy. First of thing as a business objects with the scope of the conver conversion, the scope may vary depending on the industry and your stakeholders specific requirement. It is different from organization to organization from stakeholders specific requirement to another stakeholders specific requirement. So the scopes will be depending on this. Scope of transactions and the master data. For example, years of GL history, active customers, suppliers, opening invoice, unreconciled payment, open purchase order, receipts, blanket purchase order, open requisitions, all of this. It's highly recommended to consider cleansing aged and low value open transactions in your legacy system before conversions. Now you are going to make a conversion, right, from a legacy system, as we said before, ERB system, to cloud. It will be better. It's a good chance for you to make a cleansing data before make a conversion. Cleansing data to cover all of the applications, starting from accounts, suppliers, customers, all of this. It's very good chance for you as a consultant, project manager, team leader, track leader, stakeholders to make a cleansing because this is will be a new system for you. So for the customers and suppliers in legacy systems, you have to remove the duplicate either by merge, inactivate, all of this, duplicate invoices, never validated invoices, for example, unreconciled payment, also check of all of these to consider it during conversion or make a migration. Automated bulk upload, there are two conversions high volume low volume for the high volume there is one tool for the low volume also there is a tool this is tools which is given by oracle cloud objects that need to be loaded in bulk then subsequently uploaded in bulk during the data migration determine the cutoff date 
for data entry in the legacy system barrier to go live and clearly communicate the detailed plan of action to stakeholders users business users the team who are working on this project cut off date means that now the users for example still working on the legacy systems so the cut off date that the, during this date we are going we are all of us must be as a go live date on the new system as a oracle cloud so we have to determine all of these details to ensure that everything is stopped now on the legacy systems and the, all of the stakeholders users on the plan with you that they are no by this date or cut off this date we will be stop working enter transactions all of the transactions which is cover all of the modules in this legacy system and we will start to enter these transactions in the oracle cloud define a visible number of migration cycles with the entry and the exist criteria and define a conversion project plan with tasks dependencies estimated effort resource assignments progress tracking and so on all of these will be the conversion strategy as a critical success factors for the conversion strategy often your conversion strategy will undergo significant update once the first load cycles has been completed as the lessons learned from this initial migration will feed into the strategy going forward the prerequisites of all of these you have to complete all prerequisites prior to the beginning of data conversion activities as you know what is the, these prerequisites of all for the in oracle cloud you have to configuration enterprise structure for hcm application setup for example gl ab ar fixed assets tax for example employees buyers approval cycles all of these business units legal entities uh, approvals all of these must be ready to complete as a prerequisites prior to the beginning of the data conversion data cleansing and the transformations as we said before that the cleansing should optimally happen with the legacy system or alternatively as a part of the data transformations for loading into the cloud it's a good chance to make a cleansing before migration transformation and mapping of the legacy data object to the new data object for example chart of account values organizations item numbers transaction types project numbers suppliers customers all of these were applicable extract and prepare source data into a conversion format that align with the conversion method or a tool now in legacy systems are you are going to extract for example the suppliers so you will extract supplier prepare source data in a conversion format that align with the conversion method or a tool for example i am going to upload the suppliers with our standard fbdi or adfdi template so i will extract the data from legacy system which will help me or which will using in this template from oracle cloud so i extract from here fill or feed the oracle cloud template and start to uploading extract cleansing feed or prepare the cloud template and start the uploading data loading order in data loading order there are various dependencies between data elements when loading migrated financial data into cloud and this can vary depending on your design and the transactional processing for this example as a typical timeline for a core financial migration for example you may not need all employees loaded for initial data migrations for example gl balances but at a minimum you will need the those users engaged in the data load activities 
created in the system barrier to the loads and some transactions will need employees to successfully load such as buyer for purchase orders it is very common for the legacy files for these two items banks and branches to need through cleansing barrier to loading into cloud it is good practice to load the cleanest data and then validate the further loads customers suppliers against the initial clean data files for the gl balances can be loaded well in advance of the go live with only the final period balances needing to be migrated during the go live cutover customers suppliers will be needed to support what transaction loads Purchasing buyers are required period to the purchase order conversion as a PO. Purchasing receipts will need the converted POs. On account cash will need the customer load complete before commencing. Fixed assets are normally one of the last elements to be converted as they require the legacy system to be completely closed down before migration. So this is the data loading order and as I said before it's depending on the stakeholder requirement depending on the organization size depending on the current modules implemented in the legacy systems and also which modules you are going to make or to migrate it to Oracle Cloud If we start by employees there are scope Scope means what? What is the scope of the employees that determine the conversion data? For example, employees who are active or on leave of absence or both. What's the prerequisites of employees? You have to complete configuration for enterprise structure, legal, including what legal entities, reference data sets, all required setup for the business unit. You have to extract data employees from legacy HCM system, transform data for loading. Barrier to loading employees determine if the loading should automatically create user accounts, send user credentials to the users, and provision rules to users. For example, automatically provision the employee rule. You have to consider all of these things during create employees. As I create user accounts, assign rules, not assign rules, these employees for what? for create the transactions or for implement the setup configuration all of these things you have to be consider considered during make a migration for the employees what is the tools there are use the hcm data loader this is the tools you can using for what for migrate or conversion the employees that ucm data loader you can review for examples Oracle support for data loading and the data extraction best practices. You can also review HCM data loader integration guide. You can also use appropriate effective start date for various work components. You can also refer to the HCM data loading business objects on cloud documentation. Remember that if you are planning on using supervisor hierarchy for approval, you will need to load a full hierarchy. That is all employees need supervisor to avoid issues during transactional processing again now I'm going to my plan is using supervisor hierarchy for approvals for example in AB invoices I'm going to use a supervisor once the users or the business users create invoice it must go to his supervisor for approval the invoice in this case you will need to load a full hierarchy for employees what's the next a suppliers all of us know the suppliers that what is the suppliers and before that as I told you the scope what is the scope of the suppliers determine the scope of the master data for example convert suppliers with open items or suppliers that have been used in the last two years like also customer master data, the exact period will depend on your specific business requirements. In your legacy system, there are a lot of suppliers. You have to cleanse this data of the suppliers before making migrations. 
Also, you have to decide, are you going to upload only suppliers that have been used in the last two years, last three years, four years, full suppliers. This is up to you or depends on your organization requirements. What's the prerequisite of the suppliers? Again, you have to complete configuration for what? Enterprise structure, procurement, common OP, PO setup for business unit. Clean the suppliers, again, in supplier in legal system, eliminate duplicate suppliers. Your supplier master data quality decreases as the legacy system ages. Cleansing your data barrier to cloud implementation will help improve future processing efficiency. And again, this is a good or a good chance for you to make a cleansing of the data. Use supplier's address as a one way of identifying the appropriate supplier record for image receives for this intelligent document recognition. The tools, all of us know the tools is that you can use various FBDI templates, supplier address, contact, sites, site assignments, supplier bank account, import the data in the correct sequence. As you know that the supplier first, then supplier address, then supplier site, then supplier site assignment, then bank account. This is for suppliers. Another thing that you can use for the suppliers as you know that only this way you can download it from Oracle Cloud for each of these suppliers there is one template for example there is one template for supplier address another template for supplier sites another for supplier site assignment another for suppliers and so on also for the best practices for these suppliers that familiarize yourself with FBDI template instruction prior to beginning your migration work once you download any template of this FBDI there is the first page will be open as a guide for you how to use this what is the data for date format what is the required what is not required what is the optional all of this for example if I we, we did a lot of videos for suppliers for example if I go to downloads and open any suppliers for example this one supplier this is a FBDI template for supplier address template I will open it here this is the first page overview of how to use it what is the, how to preparing the table data what is the loading after you preparing you have to click here preparing what preparing this there are whatever asterisk or star is there is required the other is optional all of this if you have make any validations in your setup for example I make a validation for a state state must be there so you have also to follow the validation which you already implemented to fill this template without any issues this is what I said that you have to follow the instructions before starting upload the data what other thing for the site assignment you have to assign suppliers site to multiple payables client business unit if necessary if I have a, if I have a lot of business units you have to assign the business site to all if you are using Oracle intelligent document recognitions for a high volume of payable standard invoice to capture invoices without purchase order for multiple business units IDR can determine the business unit based on what supplier site for each business unit Enable address validation if applicable for tax calculation based in geography. If you, as I told you before, that I enabled validation for state, this is address. For what? For tax calculation based in geography. If you make a geography in your country, it must calculate that outside your country, blah, blah, blah. Use a batch ID in the FBDI template to process import only. There is one batch ID. You can follow it to only upload this batch ID during the import process also remember to test migrated supplier records that is process invoices and make payment from the loaded data 
The more testing iterations and volume completed, the lower of the chance of hitting issues during your production cut over. When mapping your data element, please be mindful of any data privacy regulations such as GDPR or CCPA. Always review cloud capabilities for masking and anonymizing of part of your design. What the next step is a customer's the same as you know you have to make the scope of these customers determine the scope of the master data convert customers with activities in the last two years and all customers with open balances regardless of activities in the last two years open balances means open customers receipts still not applied still not uh, cleared all of these things you have to consider of this the length of the period will vary depending on your business transactional cycles. For example, if your organization always builds within a physical years, then 13 months worth of customers may suffice 12 plus 1 to catch any outlines. What the prerequisites of customers? You have to complete configuration again, enterprise structure, reference data sets, receivable setups, for business unit, assign your reference data set for customer site, customer relationships, business objects. Don't use the seeded common data set. Don't use seeded common data set. Data cleansing of customer where in your legacy system. Whatever legacy system you have, you have to make cleansing and elimination of duplicate customers either by delete or merge or whatever you are going to make these eliminations. Again, your master data customer's quality decreases as the legacy system ages, so cleansing your data prior to cloud implementation. Also, the tools, uh, as you know in customers, you have to review the conversion as FBDI templates. Also, another tools in Oracle that upload or create customers from spreadsheets. FBDI for high volume. There is another one that ADFDI, as the application development framework for data import. This is for low volume. As we said before, that there are two volume, high and low. Again, you have to map the data elements of customers master in your legacy system to the cloud ERP customer data model. This allows you to determine the data extract requirement and transformation to Oracle Cloud. Again, you can use reference data set to limit business units. Each customer is available for use in. Alternatively, you can share customer address across multiple business units. For high volume data, organize the data in separate files for loading into Oracle Cloud. Enable address validation if applicable again for tax classification or calculation based on geography. And remember to test migrated customer records that is process invoices, apply payment from the data loaded. More testing iterations completed and the more data volume tested, the lower the chance of hitting issues during your production cut over. What's the next is GL balances. GL balances, as you know, the scope of historical data required. For example, again, two years of historical GL balances prior to go live, excluding balances of periods of detailed journals to be converted normally current year if cutting over mid financial years. It is not unusual for customers to convert single year to date balances for the first year of historic balances. B B2D as a period to date monthly balances for the second year and the detailed journal for the year of cut over. If foreign subsidiary ledgers are within its group, scope, your scope, you have to include balance translation to parent company currency. Again, if you foreign subsidiary ledgers are within your scope, you have to include balance translation to parent company currency. What is the prerequisites for the GL? Accounting configuration is complete. Chart of account, enterprise structure, primary ledger, secondary, reporting, if applicable. Complete chart of account mapping if applicable also from source 
chart of account to a new chart of account and translate source data to new chart of account. For example, in a legacy system, I have chart of account one, but in cloud, I am going to create a new chart of account as a chart of account two. You have to make a mapping between these two chart of accounts. This account map to this account, this old account map to this new account, and so on. I will define and enable cross validation if applicable. If you are going to make cross validations, you have to prepare the cross validations as a CVR. This approach depends heavily of the quality of your source data. Also, if balanced translation is required, ensure that the accounting calendar has at least one period period to the first GL period with conversion data. Now, what is the tools? You can use journal import FBDI table for high volume. This is just journal creation and again EDFDI spreadsheets. This is for a low volume. I think this is the two common tools for all of the financials. Also there is the same in procurement, requisition, blah, blah, blah. So FBDI for high volume debt. EDFDI spreadsheets, if you have small like this, you can upload through EDFDI spreadsheet journal. Also for GL balances, you can cre create journal from spreadsheets. This is like uploading trial balance. This account debit, this account credit. So the total or the net of this trial balance will be zero. I think the GL balances it not uh, a big headache because like a trial balance like a journal debit credit blah blah blah. Again, if balance translation is required, you have to ensure the account calendar has at least one period period to the first GL period with conversion data. Historical translated amount may be required for some accounts such as equity, fixed assets, and so on. When executing conversion, open one GL period for a conversion and continue to open next period after completing of posting and reconciliation of each period. As posting trigger roll forward of GL balances at least to the latest open period. Having many open periods will affect performance of GL post. So try to keep one or two periods as open to don't affect the performance of GL post. When you post to period period, GL automatically updates the beginning balances of all subsequent periods, including close period through the last open period. Extract trial balance from source systems with closing balances of balance sheet account for period period to the first period of circle data as a debit and credit for each period. For GL accounts that require re-evaluation such as foreign currency, demonetized assets, liability accounts, ensure that the conversion data has entered and accounted amount in appropriate currencies in order to use the standard re-evaluation functionality going forward for Oracle Cloud. If the source that includes account affected by of re-evaluation, convert those balances in accounted amounts with zero amount in entered currency. If you enable journal approval, ensure that the journal source used for the conversion is unchecked for approval because this is opening balance. No need for approval in this uploading or migration data. Alternatively, you can enable journal approval only after GL conversion is complete. Also, this is up to your requirement. Tips for high volumes, as I told you that use import account combination if BDI template. There is one if BDI template to import account combination. This period to running journal import to improve what in journal import performance. Else, after these steps, you have to run ESS program optimize journal import performance with a gather statistics and you can research of the my oracle support articles on multiple thread journal import process if you don't have uh, re-evaluation or translations as i told you you can upload just opening trial balance for these gl balances for example if i have excel sheet here This, if this is my legacy 
system and this is my Oracle ERP cloud for example if the last as a cutover date that we are going as a go live date must be for example January 2024 so the last period here must be as a December 23 or November whatever so once you class all of the users stop to enter transactions now this is the finalized everything is boosting in the legacy system everything is approved there is no any bending there is no any unreconciled there are uh, unvalidated invoices all of the invoices completed the receipts apply all of this that trial balance will be here either in gl so you can extract this trial balance depends on the business unit if, uh, if you have a lot of business units so for each business unit it will be a trial balance trial balance for business unit one trial balance for business unit two so you can extract this go to confirmation from stakeholders from the business units oh sorry for the business users you can upload it here as i told you through fbdi or uh, adfdi as a journal upload journal through the bridge sheets here you can upload it in what not in january you can upload it either in december 2023 or adjustment if you have adjustment period as 2023 why because it will be as an opening balance for 2024 in oracle cloud but if you upload it in january so where is the opening balance you have to upload either december or adjustment so this is for gl balances or journals and the budget also so let's go back to the our slides to continue this is finished the next is a gl journals again you have to complete chart of account transparency structure primary ledger secondary blah 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 completing also chart of account mapping if you have cross validation you can also create cross validation or not this is up to you the tools also there is journal import fbdi as a dfdi also spreadsheet for low volume and high volume what's the best practices when executing a version the same what we said before for the gl balances you have here extract posted journal entry from the source for each accounting period within a scope also if you have a lot of business unit in your legal system as i said before you have to extract each journal for each business unit or a ledger sorry for a ledger ensure the conversion data has entered amount in a buried currency to use the standard re-evaluation functionality convert the journals as soon as conversion gl balance is complete reconcile also with the source data by extracting journals from oracle cloud Remember that any reversing journal created in your legacy in the last months of processing will need to be what reversed manually in cloud. That is any accrual reverses from original entries booked in the last months of the legacy systems use will need to be entered into cloud GL. Tips for high volume again you have to use import count combinations you have to run optimized journals with gather statistics and you can also search on oracle support account for how to upload gl journals this is the best practices tools prerequisites of the gl journals uploading from any link systems to oracle cloud what's the next year gl budget also if you have any gl budgets and you are going to determine the scope of the, of the budget data for example the current year's approval budgets if historical actual two budget variants financial reports are required the scope should include budget data of for gl periods of actual data converted again the account conversion as a brick re requisites must be complete chart of account enterprise chart of account mapping define accounting scenario also to represent the budget what is the tools there are import general ledger balance as a bdi template from cloud documentations also there is adfdi spreadsheet upload from general accounting dashboards in oracle cloud if you have any integrations with a budget also you can make integration to ensure that this integration is work on test after integration is 
you ensure that it's working fine on test environments you can go alive for these integrations to be on broad in instance to transfer the budget as an opening balance or actual balances to the oracle cloud what's the best practice of the oracle cloud as gl budget you have to convert the budget data independently of actual gl data conversions as budget data is loaded directly into the sps cube there is one tool is sps cube in general ledgers so the budget data is loaded directly into this area as sps cube there is no dependence on the conversion of gl actual data avoid defining multiple accounting scenario to represent the budget here as it means having to select each member of the accounting scenarios in financial report and smart view reports similar to, to the gl actuals budget can usually be loaded early in the data migration cycles in my projects i didn't face any keys to upload the budget because as i told you in my for example in this my excel sheet here we close the either the end of the year the middle of the year blah 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 they can make the net balance of the budget here and take it as a consider to using the the forward balances to the next years this is what i faced but i didn't upload before opening balance for budget as i told you the budget here the net which is not reversed not encumbrance blah 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 for example 1 million so i will take consider this 1 million plus the actual budget of 2024 for example here the budget of 2024 is for example 2 million blah 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 so i will consider this 1 million plus 2 million so i will have budget 3 million in 2024 what's the next in my slide ab payable open invoices debit memo credit memo and the next will be payment AP, as you know, that determines the scope of the conversion data, open transactions, remaining balances from partial payments, conversion of closed transactions will add significant effort and complexity to any data migration conversion plan. Prerequisites again, enterprise structure, reference data set, payable setups for business units, extract all the open transaction for the legacy system and transform to the format of prepare conversion complete conversion of suppliers suppliers must be converted or imported or defined before uploading the opening invoice because the opening invoice it will be assigned to the suppliers if the suppliers is not there so this open invoice either debit memo standard credit memo prepayment will not create it what is the tools you can use fbdi template from oracle documentation for payable invoice for the law you can create invoices in a spreadsheet task there is one task as create invoice from spreadsheet what's the best practice whenever possible take this again opportunity to cleanse your transaction debt and close out the small value or aged balances for example if i have credit memo and standard invoice this not refunded this not paid so you can cleanse this data by make a zero payment in your legacy system to close all of this debit memo sorry credit memo or debit memo with the standard invoice this is what the cleans means it's also common for customers to pay suppliers in advance for example pay ahead for seven to ten days just prior to the go live date cut over date this is minimize what any risk impacting supplier pays in the event of any go live delay for organization using netting functionality it's recommended to run this process in legacy system prior to the data migration to reduce the volume of transaction requiring conversion to the cloud 
or partially paid invoices, consider converting the net balance owed on the invoices. This approach avoiding converting what the full invoice amount as an open and then converting the partial payment which require more effort for conversion. While it may be technically possible to convert closed transactions, converting open transactions only is the most practical option in terms of scope due to the significant effort and complexity of converting closed transactions. Once the reconciliation is started off, reverse order counting, all of this. Before we going for reconciliation and this, let's come back to our Excel for AB. AB, there are a lot of invoices, standard invoice, debit memo, credit memo, prepayment, and multi period invoices. For the standard, you have to clean, for example, if I have one invoice which is total amount is 1000 by still remaining unpaid 500 so in this case i have to just upload this invoice but the remain with the remaining amount as a 500 no need to upload with the full amount for the debit memo as i told you if i have a standard invoice with 100 for the supplier a supplier one and i have a debit memo or a credit memo with for example minus 100 for the same supplier as supplier one so i don't need to convert this to cloud why because this i will make a zero payment in legacy system in my legacy systems i can make zero payment to what to close these two invoices also the credit memo the debit memo because you can this is all is in negative sign what about prepayment if you have a make a prepayment with for example 1000 and you already paid this is paid prepayment but still not applied so in this case you have to make upload prepayment invoice in December or adjustment in cloud and the plus prepayment you have also to make a Adobe payment in cloud to be applicable for the users when he make any open invoices in after the opening balance date so in these cases also you have to consider all the prepayment amount applicable to upload it or to migrate it from legacy systems to the cloud in opening balances multi-period accounting there is a special case for the multi-period accounting if i have multi-period accounting one invoice in legacy system this is for example legacy system i have a multi-period accounting for example from 1 1 23 to 31 December 24 this invoice if the total is 2000 for example so 1000 will be in 2023 and the other 1000 will be 2024 the multi-period accounting as expensed as accrued expensed the 1000 already closed transfer from accrual to the expense where in 2023 in legacy systems so this is for you is done but during make the migrations this multi period there is still 1000 amount must be accord in 2024 which is our oracle cloud so in this case you can make transfer this invoice as a two lines in Oracle Cloud, you will make one or line one as a 1000 without any assigning any period. There is no any period assigned to this account or this line. Second line 
or line 2 I will make the remaining 1000 by in this case I have to assign start period as January 2024 and last period will be December 24 like this case why because I told I tell the system that this 1000 1000 will be for one year because this already closed in our legacy systems this is standard debit memo credit prepayment and multivariate accounting or for accurate expense and all of this as a MPA you have to cleansing you have to only convert or migrate the net amount no need to convert all you have to also cleansing your suppliers to upgrade the or migrate the actual suppliers this is for AB there is still payment if we're talking about the AP payment as I told you that there are unreconciled payments right this unreconciled payment in legacy system still not cleared or not reconciled so you have also to consider this payment to migrate it from legacy to Oracle Cloud because in any time in 2024 the bank statement can send this payment to reconcile so you have to consider also all of the payment as unreconciled to migrate it to the Oracle Cloud either from the Adobe payment in 2023 in cloud or through external transactions in cash management let's come back to the, our slide invoices here once you make reconciliations these transactions will create accounting as I told you here if you upload it in December 2023 in cloud or adjustments all of these transactions payment uh, credit memo blah 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 will create accounting so you will transfer it to GL once you transfer to GL you have to approach either once you transfer make a reverse for the batch or after you posting in GL you can create a one manual journals or two to make a reverse of all of these patches in GL to what to don't affect the GL because you already opened or uploaded the trial balance so the trial balance it will be the opening balance of your reports as a trial balance account analysis all of this but the transactions which is create you created in the period period in Oracle Cloud it must not showing as opening balance so in this case you have to transfer and post and reverse or transfer post and make a manual journal to reverse these journal patches either payable receivable the assets all of this you can follow either this approach or this approach oh here instead of reversing you can create a manual journals with reverse what debit and credit you can create manual journals spreadsheet manual as well as reconciling the amount and the liability remember to console your age invoices listing it all this for identify any potential issues with your migrations similarly remember to take time to review your initial payment schedule post cutover to ensure they reflect blah 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 outstanding deferred expense one line for this as a, another line for the difference this is what I told you before for uh, deferred expenses or multivariate accounting if you have invoicing approval you have to build a rule for approval but in this case for the opening transactions or opening balances you don't need to make approval because this 
approval already approved in the legacy systems and the accounting also already affected in your, in your accounting box so don't need you don't need to make approval for this opening or migration data if you are converting transactions that have a tax point basis of payment then you need to convert the tax portion of the invoices to ensure accurate tax calculations once you go live in cloud also Generally, there are three common use cases when migrating open item transactions. The charge account is booked against a specific suspense account, no tax added, as it is previously have been accounted for in your, as I told you, in legacy systems, as the transactions are only being migrated to facilitate payment. The net amount is booked against a specific suspense account, but the tax values are also migrated to allow compliance of countries where the indirect tax is recorded on payments, or also in the case of split payment related invoices for certain countries. The original transaction accounting and tax is fully, fully migrated. Also, if I come here, if this invoice, the tax is calculated in this invoice, and now I'm going to upload. As I told you, the accounting entries which you are going to upload it in here, the period period of a good life in Oracle Cloud, this accounting will be reversing either by reversing the batch in GL or make a manual journal as a reverse debit and credit. So the tax account on these invoices which you are uploaded here, you can pass the same account, the suspense account, because the effect of this you don't need it in Oracle Cloud. What about unreconciled payment? As I told you, complete configuration, cash management, extract all unreconciled payment from legacy systems. There is one cash management external transactions. External transactions, this is which is not related to any AB payment or AAR receipts. So during this tool or FBD template in Oracle Cash Management, you can upload this unreconciled payment. Because as I told you before, in legacy system, this payment is still unreconciled. So in the future, maybe I received it in my cash uh, bank account statement. So at that time, the users need to reconcile these payments. So you have two options. As I told you, you can make a domain payment, invoice and the domain payments in your payable or the other one which is recommended and best practice by Oracle to create them through FBDI as cash management external transactions. Here is a line accounting flag in the FBDI template how the legacy system handles reconciliation accounting and conversion of GL balances for cash clearing account. For example, if the legacy system record accounting when a payment is reconciled. GL balances conversion should include clearing account and the accounting flag should be yes. Then when the external transactions are reconciled in cloud cash management, create accounting will record what cash clearing in cloud GL. As you know that during make a payment, there are two or three options. Are you make a payment uh, create account when payment is reconciled, when payment is registered, when payment is cleared. All of these considerations you have to take it during make uploading is unreconciled payment. What next is receivables? The receivables will be the same that you have to complete enterprise, reference data, receivable setups, business units, reference data set for customers, blah blah blah. There is auto invoice import. I already make a one invoice before to auto invoice import FBDI templates to upload all of these open invoices. Again, you have to consider the, the net amount, either standard invoice, credit memo, debit memos, also for the invoices which is related to multiple period, you have to consider also the net. If I have, for example, again, one invoice for two years, one year is occurred as a revenue recognition or the revenue is recognized for one year but still not recognized for the second years you have also to consider like these cases during make upload or migrations which tools auto invoice on board this is will help you to upload the open invoices and the credit memo in account receivables 
This is opportunity to close out low value and degree transactions, which is technically the possibility to convert closed transactions, convert open transaction only is the most practical option due to significant effort and complexity required to convert closed transactions. Again, once the reconciliation has signed off, you can reverse all accounting from journal created by the subledger posting from data conversion, since the accounting is already included in the conversion of the general ledger balances. As I told you that the trial balance, the total amount which is shown there for the account receivables, the receipts, blah, 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 must be equal to the detailed invo open invoice credit memos receipts which is uploaded in the subledgers as Oracle receivables. So you're already up uploading the opening balance during the trial balance or the journal or the balances in GL. So the affecting or the accounting entries of all of these transactions or as opening invoices in subledgers, once you transfer it to the GL, you have to either reversing or create opposite journal to reverse these journal entries. You can also here reconciling the amount as it balances to reconcile your what aged invoice listing. This is will help identify any potential issues with the migration. Again, customer with high volume data migration should work with Oracle support to ensure this configuration are optimized for their processing. If you are converting transactions that have a tax point of basis, you will need to what convert the tax portion of invoices to ensure accurate calculations once you go live in cloud. In regard of converting sales invoices to support, for example, BBM migration, you may also con consider creating a conversion AR transaction type with open receivables and the post to GL must be disabled. Why? This means there is no accounting entries from the conversion of receivable invoices. During you create the AR transaction type, there is one, two options, open receivables and post to GL. Post to GL means that the accounting entries from the conversion will be transferred or will be created. But in the BPM migrations, you have to disable the post to ledger for this transaction type for only PPM migration. This is only used for converting project billing invoices uh, and revenue sections for this document. For the closed invoices, no need to upload it. Khalas, it's already closed, it's already uh, the customers uh, pay it, so no need to upload the reconciled receipts, uh, applied receipts, maybe applied receipt but still not reconciled. So in this case, you have to upload the receipts also. For the opening invoice, uh, which the invoice is partially paid or not paid, you have to consider this. There are also three common use migrations, chart of account, again, specific as suspense and the net amount against specific suspense and this is for no tax added because uh, it's already affected your what legacy system accounting or book accounting for the receipts also you have for AR receipts there is one also spreadsheets to upload receipts or you have to upload it through any uh, FBDI template uh, for as I told you the receipts which is still not clear do not reconciled do not applied because in the futures maybe the uh, customer ask you to make an invoice and apply this to this also as a cleansing if you have standard invoice AR and credit memo in your legacy systems you can make apply this to this there is one using ABI any tools to make a cleansing data for these transactions before make a migration from legacy to the cloud. What's the next as affects assets? You have to complete configurations, assets, books, uh, ledgers, the currency, uh, locations, uh, uh, the descriptive uh, flex fields, uh, flex fields of assets, uh, all of these categories, book, uh, depreciation types, all of these you have to uh, prerequisites you have to complete this first before uploading the fixed assets 
determine the cutover period also as a run depreciation as I told you here in my example I have legacy system in December so the last depreciation period must be what must be December so here in Oracle Cloud the first period of the depreciation must be January 2024 so also the first period of your book in Oracle Cloud must be what January 2024 because during setup the book there is one option as what is the first period the first period in the migrations depends on my here scenarios must be January 2024 for the assets also you can use mass addition if video i templates or uh, add assets from spreadsheets which is in oracle fixed assets there are a lot of videos related to this you have also to consider the data during uploading these fixed assets for example are you going to upload it with for example the uh, accumulated depreciation without accumulated depreciation but it it will be better to upload it with accumulated depreciations because it's to tell the system that this amount these assets with this amount is accumulated depreciation this amount so on the next depreciation you have to depreciate the net amount not the full amount you have to take it again also you have to extract all of the data which is related to fixed assets locations from legacy systems if there are any employees assigned to these assets in your legacy systems you have to consider but before that you have to define these employees in HCM cloud uh, also uh, the accounts of the categories in cloud you have to assign the expense account let me show you one example I already uploaded assets before one day for example this this is data for example I received it from the business users for example what is the description of the assets what is the major main or category what is the cost what is the unit what is the location of this it will be in the fusion what is the depreciation expense account for each category as you know that there is account for depreciations and what is the date place in service it's very important data and if you have any depreciation limit as I told you the depreciation reverse or accumulated depreciation no need in this case if you have sorry it, it's required in this case that you have to upload the accumulated depreciation and depreciation reserve to tell the system that if the for example the cost of these assets is 450 the accumulated depreciation for example is 50 so the net which is will be the net between cost and depreciation reserve the system will consider this net amount in the next depreciation in the cloud or if the accumulated depreciation is the same so it will not be considered in any depreciation running I think there is no any special cases for the assets because I, as I told you you have to run the assets registers from legacy system by the end of this 2023 December for the registers for each book if you have a lot of a book then you can consider it once you get the confirmation and approval from the business users stakeholders that this is the last picture of our assets registers you just take it and upload it through FBDI or upload assets from spreadsheets on Oracle Cloud in the first period as January once you upload it you can make post but before post you have to ask the users to confirm that this is the data is uploaded in Oracle Cloud you can extract it from export to Excel blah 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 once you confirm it you can start to post as a post mass additions create run depreciations and either close the period or make any 
adding retirement blah 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 so i think in assets it's straightforward take it from here upload it here as you see here, here also there are two best practices as approach a and approach b that for the assets go live period option a is the recommended approach that current open period for the asset book is the go live period used for data conversion and migrations this is cleanest approach the period period the op approach p period period of the go live date of the asset book is used for data conversion and migrations involve more manual interven interventions as you need to suspend depreciation for the month's period to go live run as create accounting from data conversion process create manual journal entries to update gl balances as the balances are already included in what in the conversion of gl balances these steps for a b a r and g l these balances for a b and they are if a included what in the conversion of g l balances migration as you know that reconcile assets conversion by using assets standard report also if you have any data available in your legacy system for example a b invoice b o numbers which is purchased you can migrate this or updated to include like this for in dff for example in asset descriptions in tag number you can also take the same data from legacy to put it in any field in the fbdi or adfdi assets for example in my actual case when i take the assets from legacy systems the now these assets in legacy systems already registered with the numbers so what i did to keep these numbers i take these numbers in the oracle cloud fbdi template and they put it in the descriptions so it will be a reference for the users because once i upload it in oracle cloud it will take a new numbers so how to keep the old numbers of the assets which is registered in legacy systems in cloud i keep it in assets descriptions you can keep it for a tag dff this is up to you also not only assets numbers for any other data which is in your legacy systems you can keep it in cloud for any other field like tag dff descriptions and so on also it may be beneficially to either run depreciation in a test environment both to go live as a p2t production to test to help identify any issues with the migrated data or run what if depreciation analysis report as you know this is a tools also it it was in e-business that what if i uh, for example run depreciation for this asset with this depreciation type it's a tool to give you what will happen if you using this depreciation also you can run it as a report and review the output to as a test or as a pre uh, go live or a post go live open purchase orders the open purchase orders it's also there are some prerequisites complete enterprise structure reference as it complete conversion suppliers locations items if applicable employees who are procurement agents and extract the purchase order from legacy system under transfer format for conversion what is the tools there is one purchase order import fbdi from oracle cloud all of these templates once you search in google you will find a lot of templates you can write fbd template fbdi template for finance you can write fbdi template for procurement you will find a lot of fbdi what the best practices disable email notification to suppliers to avoid sending converting versus orders this during use this profile as a bo control supplier communications to disable all forms of bo communications you can also avoid routing converting bushes order for approval you can set approval action or fbdi to bypass to what to import bushes order in status approved user also perform the importing must have the import purchasing document bypassing approval privilege review buyers for convert bo's as it may be that some employees are no longer active and they may need updating for conversion 
as I told you before, that the employees, for the buyers, for the approval, for the hierarchy, all of these things must be, you have to ensure that it's already there, because, for example, purchase order, requisitions, uh, uh, invoices, uh, journal approval, all of this. What's the next? Ensure proper cutover to go live when the last purchase order in legacy system is included in the conversion data. Also, go live date, cutover date, all of these things must be in your plan to stop here and start on the cloud. What's the next? Purchase order receipts. Again, reference data sets, business units, assign your reference data sets, conversion supplier location, extract also purchase order from legacy system as a purchase order receipts. There is one tool uh, upload as a purchase order receipts REST ABI template for Oracle Cloud documentations. What's the best practices? For example here, as you see, if I have in legacy system BO status fully closed, fully closed means the BO quantity 100, you already make receipt quantity and the invoice quantity is the same. So what is the conversion? No conversion required. The second case is fully received but not invoiced. For example, BO quantity 100, Receipt quantity 100, invoice quantity 40. So in this case, you can make BO quantity as a 60 conversion and receipt quantity 60 and invoice quantity still zero. BO issued only. The BO quantity 100, receipt quantity and invoice is zero. In this case, the conversion what? BO quantity is the same. Partially open. If you have in legacy BO quantity 100, receipts 60 and invoice 60 in this case you have to upload on conversion what be a quantity 40 100 minus 60. if you have partially open also that be a quantity 100 receipt quantity 60 and the invoice quantity 40 in this case you will still be a quantity as 60 receipt quantity is 20. if you are also another partially Open as a BO quantity 100, receipt quantity 60, invoice quantity zeros. You can also conversion BO quantity the same, receipt quantity the same, invoice quantity the same. This is for purchase order receipts. What I faced before for purchase order receipts, BOs, blah blah blah. One approach to in legacy systems, whatever is still open or uh, uh, not uh, fully received blah 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 we finalize close all of these BOs in legacy and we consider it as a manual transactions in Vision and I don't like this solution for example if I go to down in legacy system if I have BO with quantity 100 and I make receipt with the same or less than 100 but still not invoice not invoice now we are in cloud so maybe in the future the user need to make an invoice for this bo either one invoice or a lot of invoices the first approach which is recommended by oracles to upload this as an opening balance in your cloud to allow the users to make a match by this the second approach which is I not recommended some of organizations close this in legacy systems so in the new systems the users can make a manual invoice match manual matched invoice manual means without any matching the user will create a standard invoice direct invoice and he can make in descriptions is that this is as a reference is bo for example number 100 uh, receipts 100 in our legacy systems this approach is not correct the best correct is to make a relation between the bo receipts invoice so you have to upload the remaining or the still open bo's or receipts unreceived or the receipts which is still not invoiced or partially invoiced to the oracle cloud to allow the users to continue the same because if you closed in 
or finally close in legal systems and ask the users to make this invoice manually it will be a very risk for you let's come back this is as examples what else requisitions the same reference uh, you have also extract purchase order ex uh, sorry uh, requisitions from legacy systems there is one also as a rest api for open requisitions this is i think is duplicate the theme approach for the requisitions there is open a template for the requisitions to also upload the net or upload the requisitions which is not auto created to the bo or you can it's it, it's not recommended by oracle but it's recommended by me if it's still stage the requisition you are created in legacy but still not created any bo receipts any other documents you can finalize close it in legacy and you can recreate it again in oracle cloud this is for the requisitions thank you for watching this is as an overview for data migrations best practices which is recommended by oracle what is the tools what i faced Thank you.